why don't we get right into it then? Uh, you, okay. you, you've had uh, a, a pretty interesting last couple of days, to say the least, with what's going on over at City Field with Jerry and Omar. Talk a little bit about what's what, what's been going on behind the scenes and what you've witnessed and, and, and all the craziness over at City Field right now, the last couple of days. Well, you know, I mean, what I've seen is, is pretty much what everybody else has seen, and that's what's gone on. And look, I, I think we all kind of sense that, that uh, a change was, was coming, and there was time to do something. I, I, you know, you, you hear the fans, you see them obviously frustrated with the situation, and the ownership, I think, really showed on Monday how frustrated they are. Um, you know, I was sitting watching the, the press conference with Bobby O, and I think the thing that really came out to me is just, you know, I think I heard the word painful four or five times from the ownership, and, and I think that that's uh, from Jeff and from Fred, and, and I think that's really what comes across is, you know, I think people look at them and, and don't necessarily uh, think of them in terms about how much they care about the team, but... You know, they live and die with this team every day, no question. Now, do you, do you think that's a perception that people have just gotten wrong about the family, about the Wilpons in general, that they don't care? I mean, you, you saw how much they do. So is there just too much misconception out there among fans about the family? Yeah, I mean, I think there is. I, I definitely think there is. I, I think that, uh, you know, in, in being around it a little bit more the last couple of years, but not, not so much more... You know, I'm at the studio all the time, so you really get a sense, though, about what it means to this family to to, to win a championship and, and what they want to do. And, and look, they don't want to sit there and watch what's going on here uh, the last few years. At the same time, they they wanted to give you know the people involved, whether it be Omar Minaya or, or uh, you know Willie Randolph the first time around or Jerry Manuel, every opportunity to try to get the job done. Yeah. But, they haven't gotten the job done, and 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 ultimately, uh, as much as those guys are good baseball people and, and and good people, you have to answer to your fans, and you have to answer, uh, I think, to your own selves when you don't when you don't win, and and they felt like it was time to, to do that. I I think that there is a a misperception out there about you know the Mets and the, the ownership doesn't care about the fans you know that the, the, I, I think it's you know out there among some fans but it's just wrong I mean I, I really have seen it up close and it's just wrong what about the way they handled the whole situation this time? Quite different from the way things went down when Willie was let go uh, talk a little bit about that that had to be a little bit more refreshing to see you know well I, I just think that um, you know, I think when you looked at how it, it all went, they were going to make sure that they handled this the right way because they had the utmost respect for the two guys involved. They really did. And and for the coaching staff and people like that who were kind of uh, in limbo right now, um, they, this, you heard it from them, and it's really true. You know, Omar had been around the organization for six years and had obviously been with it before that when he was one of the assistant GMs under Steve Phillips. And, you know, he was somebody that, that they held in, the, in a great deal of regard. And it's the same thing, I think, with Jerry um, the last couple of years. I think that they just wanted to be sensitive to them but ultimately, you know, show the fans that, What's happened in the last four years is not acceptable. Okay. What about those two guys, though? You know, like when you think about somebody like Lawrence Frank, I know it's a different sport. People were saying after the Nets fired him, it's going to be tough for him to find a job in in basketball again. What, what about Jerry Manuel? Is is he hireable by another team, or do you think he's going to have a tough time staying in baseball? Well, I don't think he's going to have a tough time staying in baseball. I don't know that he's going to get a manager's job right away when you when you came out of what happened the last couple of years. Um, I think Jerry's a good baseball guy and should get another opportunity. Um, I just don't know if that's something that's going to happen immediately. Um, I, I think he's definitely a valuable guy to have around, uh, you know, be it if he goes and, and becomes a bench coach and, and kind of works back toward managing. I don't know. He's kind of indicated that he's just interested in managing again, and you understand that, but I, I sure. think that, you know, if you're Jerry, you have to you potentially look at what's happened the last couple of years and, and realize it's not going to be easy to get, to get a job when things haven't happened. Now, did Jerry have all of the pieces in place all the time? No, because of all the injuries that happened, but I, I think he's a guy that, that 
deserves another opportunity at some point down the line. I don't know that it's going to come immediately. Okay. Omar, a different situation because of his past, uh, his success with the uh, the Expos and things of that nature, or is he in the same boat? I think when you look at Omar's history, you know, he did put together a team that contended for a title and that just fell short two years in a row, and it's not good enough, but... Um, I think Omar is definitely going to get another chance and should get another chance to run an organization because the guy knows baseball. And I I think where some mistakes were made, and, you know, Jeff Lupon openly admitted uh, at the press conference that uh, the biggest foible of what happened was money that was misspent. And and people know that that goes toward Oliver Perez and and Luis Castillo um, the last couple of years. But... You know, you learn from those mistakes. Let's not forget that Omar yeah. also brought in Pedro. He also brought in Carlos Betron, who was a very productive player uh, until he really got hurt last year, and, and I still think has uh, something left to prove next season. Um, he's, he's brought in a lot of guys and made some pretty good trades. I think every GM doesn't have every trade work out the way they want or every free agent signing, but, you know, when they paid some of those guys the money that they did, did they make a mistake? Yeah, they probably did with Ali and and Castillo, but at the same time, I think that, you know, they, they did a lot of good. He did a lot of good with what he did with the organization. We're talking to Chris Carlin from SNY, pre- and post-game host for the New York Mets and host of Beer Money as well. He's also the voice of Rutgers football and basketball. Uh, you know, Chris, there have been some minor questions to the to the Wilpons about who replaces Omar and who replaces Jerry, and I think for the first time, fans might actually be pretty excited about the way Jeff answered the questions because he was pretty candid about it, and he was very forthcoming with his answers. What do you What are you expecting to see over the next three weeks, as he put it, uh, during this search for a GM? I think that they're going to go in depth with a good six or seven guys and really try to get a handle on what they're looking for, and you know. When the question was asked, and it was asked a few times about the specific criteria that you're looking for, I like the fact that they almost didn't have specific criteria. It's going to be more of a, a feel, and you get an idea about different guys. You know, does it have to be somebody who's run an organization before? Does it have to be a young guy? What are you looking for? Well, we're going to talk to a lot of different guys and really get a sense about it then. Yeah. I think that's the smart way to go because you don't want to pigeonhole yourself in what you're looking for. Um, you know, for me, I, I would not mind seeing some guy, uh, somebody who's, who's run an organization before, who's had some success, who understands what it takes to, to run the organization, but it's, it's not always going to be easy to, to find that guy and, and, and think immediately we've got that guy. One guy that comes to mind, I, you know, Jerry Ryan, I think, would be somebody that would definitely be worth, uh, worth talking to. Uh, Sandy Alderson is definitely someone worth talking to. There are younger guys, too. There With the Yankees, there's a guy that runs their entire farm system named Damon Oppenheimer, who, who's, you know, a, a very bright guy and knows what he's doing and I, I think would be worth talking to. So I think the fact that they're going to kind of leave no stone unturned here should give you a good feeling about where they're going. Okay. What about the manager now? He said that it's going to be up to the general, the new GM, to make this decision. But how how important is is this decision going to be made? Uh, this going to be when they finally pick who the manager is? Do you think it's going to be as important as people are making it out to be right now? Well, I think it'll be important. I, I think the GM will probably be more important to begin with, just based on what you're going to be able to do with uh, the next year or two with some of the contracts that you have. Can you move Ali? Can you move Luis Castillo? Do you end up just needing the money there? How are you going to handle that? I I think a lot of the early stuff is going to be on the GM. Um, I think the manager is going to be important, absolutely. Uh, You know, you you hear some of the names out there right now, whether it's Bobby Valentine, whether it's uh, Wally Backman, you know, all good choices. I, I think both good choices, but... You know, there may be people that we're not even thinking about that a new GM has in mind that, right now that, that can get the job done. Um, you know, I think the way things are playing out right now and the way things are in baseball, you have to give the general manager an opportunity to get somebody that he's going to be comfortable working with and also that, and more importantly, that he's going to be successful working with. And so you have to let him, you know, 
ultimately go through it and and uh, you know have a, a lo- most of the say in what the decision is going to be. And look, exactly. like anything else, it's going to get run through ownership. But it's not like you know you look at the decisions they've made over the last few years. It's not like they've said no a whole lot. Exactly. Okay. One last question on the way out here. Uh, tell me whether you feel fans should feel optimistic right now going into the off season and going into the 2011 season. Are, they, is, is, are we at a point right now where fans can feel a little bit comforted that things are going to get better with this organization? I think so. I, I think that you saw a lot of it yesterday in, in what the ownership had to say and what Jeff and Fred had to say. You saw how important it is to them to, to get this right. I think if you're the fans right now, you know, there's there's been uh, something done about what's happened the last couple of years, and now it's going to be interesting to see who's going to be making the calls here. But you know that the wheels are in motion and that the most important thing to this group is to win games. And, you know, I don't know that the fans have always felt that way, or at least a, a portion of the fans have always felt that way. If you didn't take that out of yesterday's news conference, I don't think you were paying enough attention to it. Exactly, exactly. Uh, Chris, I cannot thank you enough. I know it's been a busy couple of days, so I really appreciate you taking time out to talk with me today. I'm really grateful. My pleasure, Kev. All right.